Experiment 28 in Chem 1212 is titled Coordination Chemistry of Transition Metal Compounds. And in this experiment, and in the one that follows it, we're going to turn our attention to coordination complexes, which contain a metal at the center, which is Lewis acidic, and ligands around the outside that have electron pairs that are Lewis basic. In this particular experiment, we're going to focus on the colors of transition metal complexes and explore how the nature of the metal center and the nature of the ligands affects the colors of these complexes and, in turn, the energy gap between the valence orbitals on the metal. Let's begin by defining coordination complexes in a general way. So every coordination complex includes a metal at the center and ligands around the outside. Typically, the metal is a Lewis acid and the ligands are Lewis bases. Now, the overall complex can have a positive, neutral, or negative charge, but most of the time, it's the ligands that are donating electron density to the metal. So you can think of each of the ML bonds as a coordinate covalent bond between a lone pair on the ligand and an empty orbital on the metal. Now, the coordination of ligands to the metal center affects the d orbitals on the metal. And because the metal's d orbitals are typically higher in energy than the ligand's orbitals, the d orbitals of the metal are the valence orbitals of a coordination complex. So it's really important to understand the effects on the valence orbitals of the coordinating ligands. So a big question for this experiment is, how are the d orbitals on the metal affected by coordination of the ligands? So if we think about just an isolated bare metal ion, which I've written here as Mn+, it's going to have five valence d orbitals. And I've left out electrons to keep things simple, but of course in most ions, these orbitals will be occupied with electrons. When the ligands coordinate, imagine we have six neutral ligands binding in an octahedral arrangement. That's what you see here. The overall charge of the complex is still N+, plus, but now we've introduced some new electrons, and we've created new bonds between L and M. What's the effect on the d orbital energies? Well, some of the d orbitals spatially will align with the incoming electrons from the ligands, and others will be off of alignment from these incoming electrons. What that causes is a splitting, or in fancy terminology, a perturbation of the d orbital energies. Some of them will go up in energy owing to anti-bonding effects. Others will go down in energy owing to bonding effects. And again, I've left out the electrons, but in a real complex, we would see these orbitals filled with electrons, except for d0 metals that don't have any electrons in their d orbitals. With the introduction of this splitting, we introduce the possibility of transitions between these levels, electrons getting kicked up to higher levels through the absorption of energy and the emission of light energy when an electron falls down from a higher to a lower level. So we can see the splitting manifest as light, and very often the extent of this splitting falls nicely in the visible, and you're going to see that in this experiment. The extent of the splitting is written with the delta symbol, it's called the crystal field splitting parameter, and we can relate that to the frequency of the light emitted using essentially what is E equals H nu. Here I've written it as delta equals H nu. Keep in mind that this delta, or delta oct for an octahedral complex, is an energy value. This pattern of splitting with three on the bottom and two on the top is peculiar to the octahedral geometry. But the extent of the splitting, in other words, the value of delta, whether it's large or small, depends on many different factors. And one of the key questions of this experiment is, what affects this delta, and how does it affect it? In other words, what are the trends in how L and the metal affect the orbital splitting delta? We'll look at the influence of the metal in part A, and we'll look at the influence of the ligands in part B, keeping the metal constant. Now let's turn our attention to the specific parts of this experiment. In part A, we're going to be looking at the effect of the metal center on the color and the delta splitting of the complex. And so we're going to be using five different ions for this purpose, cobalt 2+, copper 2+, manganese 2+, nickel 2+, and zinc 2+. And we'll be working with aqueous solutions throughout this part of the experiment, so all of the complexes will have the form M, h 2 plus. So six waters coordinated in an octahedral fashion, so that orbital diagram that we just looked at applies, with an overall charge for the entire complex of 2 plus. We're going to take these aqueous solutions 
and perform visible spectroscopy using the LabQuest, meaning we're going to get the absorbance as a function of the wavelength for each of the complexes. From these, we can pull a lambda max value. Remember, this is the wavelength at which maximum absorption occurs. And this wavelength corresponds to the energy difference delta. So we can use the lambda max to calculate a new max, which is the frequency of maximum absorption. We can use that to calculate a delta E value, and that delta E value just is the crystal field splitting parameter delta. Now we've kept the formal charge and the geometry of each complex constant, so really the only thing changing between these five complexes is the number of valence electrons associated with the metal center. So that orbital diagram that we just saw still applies. The only thing that's changing is the number of valence electrons occupying that orbital energy diagram. And in this part of the experiment, don't pay so much attention to the wavelength itself, to the lambda max. Pay more attention to whether it's colored or colorless. You'll notice an interesting relationship between the number of valence electrons present on the metal center in the complex and whether it's colored or not. And when you go to add valence electrons to that split orbital energy diagram, don't forget to account for the 2 plus charge on each of these ions. In part B, we'll be looking at the effect of the ligand on the color and the delta splitting parameter. So we're going to be using the same metal throughout and we'll be looking at four different ligands. Water, oxalate ion, ammonia, and ethylene diamine. And something I want you to pay attention to here is the effect of the basicity of the ligand on the lambda max. So is there any relation between the basicity and in turn the delta splitting parameter? pretty easy to look up PKBs for each of these molecules on something like Wikipedia. And I would recommend you do that before you come to the lab. You'll notice a very interesting trend between the wavelength you observe, in other words, the color of the solution, and the basicity of the ligand. 